This rack of 3D printers supports a six-figure 3D printing business. I actually purchased my first 3D printer in 2019 and kept it on the end of my desk in my office. And by May of 2020, I had three printers in that same office. We then remodeled our basement where I was able to create a whole office slash print farm area and that housed nine printers. Four years later, we moved the print farm again to where it is now where I have 600 square feet of space, 100% dedicated to 3D printing. So I thought it was time for an official 3D print farm tour. I'm excited to show you behind the scenes of 3D Design Bros and all the brands and businesses that this print farm supports. A big thanks to today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. What I'm riding down on is actually one of their premium standing desks, the E7 Plus. The E7 Plus is a four-legged design and it provides rock solid stability. It can support up to 540 pounds. I went with the 72 inch by 30 inch bamboo top and the bamboo looks great in pictures and the size provides a bunch of space for doing printer maintenance and all sorts of other 3D printed related tasks. The dual motors has no problem moving the desk up or down even when fully loaded. In fact, you could fill the whole desktop with 3D printers and you don't have a space before weight would ever be a problem. One of my favorite things is this clamp power strip with USB charging. I actually leave a spare power cord plugged in at all times. So no more reaching behind the printer rack to unplug the printer. Instead, I can just pull the cord on the printer, bring it over to my desk and have power ready to go. The under desk storage drawer is also great to store tools or any spare parts you might need while working on printers. I definitely fancy myself a bit of an office furniture and tech nerd, and I've tried a bunch of different standing desks throughout the years. In a time where we have different desks pushing that $1,000 price point, it's refreshing to see a company making a quality product at a reasonable price point. They have lots of different standing desks with different bases and tops to fit any sort of budget. The FlexiSpot desks are genuinely well built. The E7 brands all have a 15 year warranty on the frame itself and the electronics and the bamboo top has a 5 year warranty. So whether you need a new desk or maybe a workbench, make sure to check out all the FlexiSpot options at the links below. The heart of our print farm, like all print farms, is our printer rack or in our case racks. We currently have two printer racks though this first one here is our main production rack. So we have um, our seven printers that are on this rack and this does all of our order fulfillment. So our Etsy shop, our Amazon, our personal website, all the orders that go out to those websites are printed on these machines here where our secondary rack uh, that has the V400 FL Sun, uh, the resin printer, a couple of Prusa Minis and our P1P that rack is mostly dedicated to prototype products for testing. So I know that there can be differing opinions on the best print farm printer. We obviously here are committed to the Bamboo Labs ecosystem. Uh, for us, it just made a lot of sense given the quality of print you get with them uh, and the speed you get with them. Uh, before we had these printers, we had a lot of Creality Ender 3v2s. We had a lot of Prusa machines. We had a few Anycubic Vipers. And if we were still running those old bed slinger machines, for the amount of production these seven printers do, we would probably be needing 20, 21 printers of those old style uh, to get the same amount of production that these seven printers give us. So for us, it's kind of a no brainer. We have limited space. And by actually switching to bamboo machines, we pushed off the need to get a studio space or rent some space somewhere else where then we'd have monthly rent that we'd have to pay to house our printers. We're able to keep them here really on one rack still um, and push that expense off much further down the road um, as these machines can get us so much more production than those older bed slinger machines could. This print farm is actually underneath my garage and though it's the biggest space we've had to work with, it's still limited in size. So we have to be very strategic with all of the space available to us and make sure we get the most value out of all the printer racks and shelving that we have down here. So this printer rack here is eight feet wide by about eight feet tall and we have it set up as four shelves. Our two main shelves here are obviously the shelves that house the printer. Up top is all of our overflow storage for our shipping materials, our boxes and things like that. And then at the very bottom of the print rack 
is our colored filament. The majority of what we print and sell is in black and white. So I don't keep a lot of colors. I don't need to keep a lot of colors in stock. So having just a small narrow shelf on the bottom is a perfect space to keep those colored spools because I just don't need a lot of it on hand. Our second rack is where we do most of our prototype testing. You can see it's made up of a lot of different printers. Some are older printers that we just don't use on our production rack anymore. And others are printers that companies send to us to try um, and get feedback from us on. So our print farm is set up like a galley and at the very end of it, we have this rack here, which is really just a place to store everything that supports the production and the filling of orders. So whether it's screws and anchors for our wall mount products or pipe for our desktop controller and headset stand, all the little extras that need to be put into the box with the product are housed on this shelf here. This is also the stop for the products themselves after they've been pulled from the printers. So once they finish printing, they go from the printers to this shelf here where they sit until somebody can come over here and pack the orders. So after the print racks, this station here is probably the second most important. It is our shipping and fulfillment station. Something that I added just recently was a little desktop computer to have a computer here and it really comes in handy. Um, I can print all my labels from here, but I can also have the Bamboo Studio slicer on here and view my orders and send them to the printers right behind me. I can just turn around and see what printers are free what color is on what printer, and it just really reduces the friction of knowing what orders need to be printed and what machines are available to print those orders. If there's a product in the print farm that's underrated, it has to be our tape dispenser. Being able to set automatic lengths really increases our time when it comes to making our boxes and taping them up to get our orders out. We're able to get all of the products that we produce here shipped in one of six boxes. So on our second shelf, we keep a stack of each one of those six different box sizes. And it's really convenient to have them right there. So as you're moving an order through the shipping process and you're printing the label and you're packaging it, you can just reach down, grab the box you need, get it taped up and keep moving along the process. The last shelf on this rack is really just miscellaneous storage. We have some filaments down here. We have empty bamboo lab spools. I'm keeping it open. I'm trying to get a bulk order of our black PLA we use, which is actually the Elegoo Rapid PLA Plus. I've reached out to Elegoo to try to work out a big bulk order, 50, 100 spools. They haven't gotten back to me. So, hey, Elegoo, if you're watching, let me know about the bulk order. I could really fill this space right here. So we're not the biggest print farm, but I think what that shows is that you don't need a warehouse full of 30, 40, 100 printers to have a successful and profitable 3D printing business. These 13 machines behind me create enough income to support my entire family of five. There's a couple keys to that success though, one being you have to sell products people want. It doesn't matter how efficient your farm is, how nice it flows, all your systems you have in place. If you don't have products people want, it doesn't matter. The second part is you gotta know how to price your product so that you make money. Let me be clear though, this is not a build it and they will come situation. You need to make sure you're selling products people actually want. And then once you find those products, you have to make sure you're selling them at a price point that's profitable and that you actually make money. Too often I see people price their products way too low. Maybe it's because they're trying to undercut their competition or they just don't know how to price effectively. Either way, it's a bad situation to be in, which is why we created 3dprintforce.com, which is completely dedicated to making sure that your print farm is profitable with the products it prints. If you wanna see how we do all those calculations, make sure you check out this video here.